Christy Kahl, Editorial Director of CARE Magazine. In this edition of the Speaking Out video series, we're talking with Dr. Jeremy Brower from the Skin Cancer Foundation on various treatment options for the disease. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so to kind of go over the basics of treatment, what is the current standard of care for the different types of skin cancer? Uh, so great question. I think we initially have to start with identifying something, as I mentioned, that's new, changing, or unusual. Uh, and in general, once you've taken the step of seeing your board-certified dermatologist, if it does warrant what we call a biopsy, that's going to be your initial step. And for most, what a biopsy involves is an administration of local anesthesia, so a little needle stick uh, to numb the area, and then they take a piece of skin. In general, they're then just a, an emollient or a little aquaphor Vaseline and a Band-Aid is all you'll need, occasionally, depending upon uh, the concern for the lesion, maybe a few stitches can be put in. Uh, and then once we diagnose and determine what kind of skin cancer it is and where it is in the body and take into account uh, other factors that we call the individual, so their age, the, if they have any other underlying medical conditions, what medications they take, where on the body uh, this skin cancer is located, uh, we'll then have a conversation about the risks, the benefits, and the alternatives to various treatment options. Okay. And so what is the best way for patients to learn more about their options? Um, I, I think first and foremost, an honest and, and direct conversation with the dermatologist who can uh, in detail discuss the diagnosis and the expectations. Uh, the Skin Cancer Foundation is a fantastic resource. So you know, we always caution, <clears throat> excuse me, we always caution uh, use of the internet to gather information, but absolutely Skin Cancer Foundation, uh, the major organizations across dermatology, or other great resources, um, but primarily I think a, a, a good thorough conversation with your board certified dermatologist uh, should, should help you direct uh, which way you wanna go with your treatment. Absolutely, and so immunotherapy is a pretty common term now um, in the treatment landscape, but how has it changed treatment for patients with skin cancer over the last decade or so? So immuno, <clears throat> excuse me, immunotherapy, uh, these days we more specifically think of for treatment of melanoma, and it, as you mentioned, it's absolutely been a game changer. I think um, you know, we talk about with melanoma survival, like a per certain period of time of survival for more advanced skin cancers. And that's, ha uh, that's definitely prolonged the life of many individuals who unfortunately would otherwise not as fared uh, as well prior to the uh, onset of uh, immunotherapies. Um, but then with the other uh, skin cancers, so in addition to melanoma, another interesting area and promising area is targeted therapies. So here, uh, what we're looking at is uh, the identification within the tumor of uh, a mutation specifically in either a, a gene or a pathway and then targeting that specific gene or that pathway in the tumor, um, which has also led to increased survival rates and has really allowed for a, a change in the way we approach some of the more advanced uh, tumors and metastatic tumors. Okay. And so with this rise of immunotherapy, you know, there's been tremendous advances. Can you just talk a little bit about the current landscape and the, um, you know, what is available for these types of cancers? Yeah, so absolutely immunotherapy definitely has its role in the armamentarium for treatment of skin cancers, most uh, importantly advanced skin cancers. However, that being said, uh, early intervention is key. So once we've detected these skin cancers, early intervention can result in very high cure rates and hopefully prevent uh, the development of these skin cancers from local uh, tumors to metastatic or advanced tumors. And uh, the intervention with the highest cure rate for surgical procedures is Mohs micrographic surgery. This is ideal for um, non melanoma skin cancer, specifically basal cell and squamous cell, but there is a growing interest and use uh, in certain melanomas as well. And the idea here is, depending upon, as I mentioned, the, the skin cancer, but also the location, as long as we deem the, the tumor is appropriate to use this technique, um, it's similar to the initial biopsy where you numb the area, you take a small piece of skin, and, and I, I liken it to a waiting game. Uh, un unlike leaving the office and waiting a few days to a week for your biopsy result, everything is done, done in, on site in real time. We process the tissue. Uh, and uh, the Mohs surgeon functions also as the pathologist reads the slides and is able to map out where the tumor is or isn't so that with each subsequent stage, because it's a staged excision, uh, we only approach it from a targeted perspective. We're not taking large concentric circles or we're not measuring out large margins. It's a much more targeted uh, approach. And the benefit of this is allows for tissue conservation. So if you're thinking about 
tip of the nose, the ears, um, but also, as I mentioned, it's, it's a higher cure rate with, with a, a good cosmetic outcome because you are uh, tissue sparing. Mm -hmm. the, another surgical intervention is a standard surgical excision. So I mentioned margins. Uh, depending upon the location of the tumor as well as uh, the tumor characteristics and the diagnosis, you take a standard margin of skin. Uh, whether it be four millimeters, a centimeter, um, those vary depending upon non-melanoma and melanoma skin cancers. Uh, and then you excise, so you're going to take a big piece of skin and you put stitches in just like you would with Mohs, but it's not a staged procedure. In general, it's a one, one procedure. So you take the piece of skin, put the stitches in, patient leaves and returns when the, the, the tissue is sent out for pathology and you get the results. Some other uh, non-surgical but still invasive procedures include what we call electrodesiccation and curatage. Uh, this tends to be reserved for individuals who have uh, early, so a superficial basal cell carcinoma, or what we call an in situ squamous cell carcinoma, where the lesion is very superficial. It's only the uppermost part or the epidermal part of the skin. And here what we're doing is we're using a tool called a curette, which is a, a sharp tool to scrape the area of involvement, but then also electrodesiccation, and we're burning the surrounding skin. And this is often repeated in series uh, a few times um, to, to remove the majority, if not all of the goal is to remove all of the tumor. Um, the downside to this is that we're not going to have any histologic confirmation, meaning unlike with Mohs surgery where the Mohs surgeon looks under the microscope or uh, with an excision where they send it to the, the pathology lab, uh, the goal here is to avoid having to cut and sew, uh, and, but the downside or the drawback is that you can't um, evaluate the tissue under the microscope because as I mentioned, you're scraping and burning the remaining tumor cells. Um, another non-surgical option is radiation therapy. This is sometimes used in conjunction with surgical treatments if it's determined that the subtype of skin cancer warrants it. So we, we talk about something called a perineural invasion. So if we find during the course of most surgery or uh, if we get the specimen back after an excision, they find that the involvement of the nerves, uh, we, we would then refer the individual to receive concurrent uh, radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is also good for what we call non-surgical candidates. So there are reasons, as I mentioned, it's not just the tumor, but also the individual that may dictate the best approach uh, to removal of, of the skin cancer. And so in certain instances, maybe the individual is not a surgical candidate. They can't tolerate the procedure or they decline the procedure. Um, and so radiation therapy is appropriate for these individuals. Similarly, there are certain tumors, uh, distal legs that don't heal well, um, that may be a better uh, candidate for a non-surgical option. Okay. So what would you say is the most exciting treatment option out there right now? I, I have to go back to our earlier conversation. I really do believe uh, immunotherapy uh, as well as targeted therapies for advanced and metastatic disease uh, really have been quite a game changer. I think we will see and will continue to attempt to move towards minimally invasive procedures and treatments and cures for, for all tumors and all diseases. Uh, so I would group um, skin cancers in, in there as well. Um, so looking forward to seeing what comes out on the horizon. Um, so with that, what would you say is on the horizon for patients with skin cancer? So I, I think patients have a lot to look forward to. I think medicine and technology and innovation are, are all moving at a very fast pace. Um, as, I, as we've mentioned, immunotherapy and targeted therapies, more of these are going to be avail made available to individuals with metastatic melanoma as well as advanced and metastatic squamous cell carcinoma, um, but also the, the non-invasive and minimally invasive um, biopsying techniques. For, as I mentioned right now, a biopsy is invasive. There is a numbing part of it as well as, as uh, taking a blade to the skin. Um, we're talking about confocal microscopy and other imaging techniques um, that the better they get and the greater the, the ability to detect and differentiate between um, different skin cancers and we call benign or more malignant tumors, uh, I think we're going to be seeing more non-invasive um, biopsy techniques and hopefully, as I mentioned, non-invasive and minimally invasive um, treatment techniques moving forward. Great. And so one thing Cure likes to do is we, we want to make sure that we're able to empower patients. So how do you think patients beca can become more empowered so that way they are their own best advocate when it comes to making treatment decisions? I, I think it, it starts with education. Education and knowledge really is power. Um, and that can, as I, I think a great resource, is your board certified dermatologist. Also, the resources and references available on 
reputable websites like the Skin Cancer Foundation's websites and all the literature that they have available um, within dermatology, the American Academy of Dermatology and other societies, Mohs, American College of Mohs Surgery, American Society of Dermatologic Surgery. So all of these are great resources. Uh, and, and I do believe it begins with education. And then going back to prevention, I think a lot of what people need to understand is skin cancer is serious. You can die from skin cancer because that is a known misconception. But the good news is these are largely preventable tumors and largely preventable cancers. You have to take action and you have to prevent it. So how do you do that? Appropriate use of UVA, UVB, or ultraviolet A and B, broad spectrum sunscreen, um, some protective behaviors, when you choose to be outdoors and what activities you choose to perform while you're outdoors. Uh, we talk about screening. So not just coming to your dermatologist once or twice a year, depending upon uh, the need, but also monthly self-skin examination. So once you know what to look for, and again, without really trying to put to memory the A, B, C, D, E's or the specific things you might look for, what a basal cell carcinoma looks like compared to a squamous cell carcinoma or what a melanoma looks like. If you are looking at your skin top to bottom, front to back, you know, start with a hair blower uh, and a handheld mirror. And if you have a loved one or a significant other or someone who can help you look at the areas that are more difficult for you to look at, once a month, take an hour or a half hour out of your day and, and look at your own skin and look for something new, unusual, or changing, and then bring that to the attention of your dermatologist. Do again, early detection results in early intervention, which results in very high cure rates. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It's my pleasure.